Hello and welcome back to Wolfie's Art Adventures. Today's adventure will be into the origins of the Halloween costume. But before I get into that, I would like to give a big thank you to an anonymous listener who recommended me for an interview. I wasn't expecting it. I definitely don't recommend you guys just sending me for interviews or anything else, but it's greatly appreciated. So thank you from the very bottom of my heart. And from this, I have a couple of ideas, which I wanted to see how you guys would thought about it, would take it, however you want to say it. So the first idea is to start recording myself, but as a video for YouTube, rather than just little pictures you guys would see. But use, instead of using my face, I would be instead be using animated avatar, seeing as how I'm not quite ready to show or do a face reveal. The second idea is to start streaming, again using this animated avatar, and just, you know, sit there and stream, start talking about art, show off other people's art or their works, and just have a great little spot where we all could talk about art and throw topics that you guys are interested in that I could then research and talk about seeing as how I have been on a schedule of some sort for myself and I can't keep to it. So I figured this would be a great way to incorporate you guys into the community and into the making of whatever it is I'm making right now. And if you are really interested, I have made a Patreon and from there you can join the Discord for this community. There you guys can talk about anything and everything art related and be able to help make and help vote for which topics are going to be talked about one week and the next and all that. If you are interested in that, just wait till the end. There will be links in the description below. So with those out of the way, let's get into the origins of the Halloween costume. Pretty sure as kids we all loved this part of Halloween the costume part. Making or even getting the perfect costume. Whether it was the couple costume in high school because you had your boyfriend or girlfriend or significant other there and you just wanted to match. Or you're just a kid having fun and you wanted to go as your favorite superhero. Everyone loves this part of Halloween. I know for sure I love this part. Sadly I can never really get into it anymore because adulthood has said your life just needs more money for things you can't do yet. But yes, the best part of Halloween, at least I think so, is the costume. But where did this practice come from? Why did we start just wearing costumes on only one day of the year? And why is it always the most spoopiest time of the year? Well, it's the earliest recording of anyone wearing a quote-unquote costume during this time of the year comes from 1585 in Scotland. Pretty sure there are many other points in history where people would wear costumes during this time of the year, but this is the earliest recorded. From there, in the 18th and 19th centuries, when the Celtic countries like Scotland, Ireland, Man, and Wales come more references. These references would always happen during the time of a Celtic festival known as Selwyn and Calan Gaif. I'm so sorry if I say any of these words wrong. It would also happen in other festivals around the Yule times. These festivals were done to mark the beginning of winter. The roots of this festival is definitely marked before Christianity. It was known as paganism. That's why everyone needs to say, it's, no, it's definitely after Christianity we started doing this. No, no, we've been doing this since before Christianity. I'm so sorry. But that is the truth. And the truth still sets you free. But during the 5th century, Ireland had become Christianized. This is important, seeing as how Christians would combine the traditions that were Celtic and combine them with Christian ideas so that it wouldn't seem like they were disrespecting their ancestors. They were just directing them to become more Christianized. At this time, it was known that Sewin was known as liminal time. And for those that don't know what that means, it was a time for spirits, fairies, or Aosai. And again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. And any of the souls of the dead that would come into our world. It was also believed that these fairies needed to be appropriated or appeased 
to ensure that people and livestock would survive the winter. Then, during the 16th century, the festival started mumming and guising. If anyone really knows what the word mumming means, or what it really does, please, please find a way to message me, because I don't know. I looked it up, and the definition it gave me is that mumming is the act of a traditional masked mime or mummer's play. I don't know what that is. I, I, I raise my hand, I call for help. Please, teacher, help. I don't know. Guising was an easier one, since this comes from the dictionary.com, but guising is the practice of disguising oneself in fancy dress. This was also done with a mask and visiting other people's houses. This is probably where trick-or-treating became an actual practice, seeing as how people would go to other houses and recite verses or sing songs in exchange for food. I'm pretty sure the song I, or the little miming song, rhyming song, was uh, trick or treat, smell my feet, something something I don't remember. I don't remember all of it, I just remember the first few lines. I mean, I could be remembering it wrong, but hey, if anyone else knows, please tell me. I am not against learning. It is also believed that people would dress up as these fairies to receive the offerings on their behalf, or to protect themselves from these fairies. It is also suggested that mummers and geysers would, quote unquote, personify the old spirits of winter who would demand a reward in exchange for good fortune. A man by the name of F. Marine McNeil suggests that Samhain festivals had included people wearing masks and costumes to represent spirits. An example of these spirits, and again I'm sorry if I butcher the word, is the Lair Ban, or the White Mare. The spirit comes from Southern Ireland and was led by youths that went house to house reciting verses in exchange for food. If the food was donated, the house could expect good fortune. If food was not donated, mischief was set upon them. In the 19th century Scotland, youths went house to house with masked, painted, or blackened faces, and they would often threaten to do mischief if not welcomed in. In other parts of Wales, men would dress as fearsome beings called the Gwarachad, or witches, sorry again if I butcher words, and the youth would just cross-dress. In other Celtic-speaking regions, it was, quote-unquote, particularly appropriate to a night upon which supernatural beings were said to be abroad and could be imitated or warded off by human wanderers. It's been suggested that wearing costumes for Halloween was developed from the custom of souling. This was pr a practice by Christians in part of Western Europe from at least the 15th century. Although the holiday itself as we know it was not always known as Halloween. During this time, it was known as All Hollow Tide. All Hollow Tide is a Western Christian season encompassing the tritium of All Souls Eve, also known as Halloween, All Saints Day, All's Hollow, All Souls Day, International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church, which is the first Sunday of November, and the Remembrance Day, which is the second Sunday of November. During this time, groups of less fortunate people would go door to door collecting soul cakes. They would either represent the dead or say prayers for the dead. A 19th century English writer once said that the festivals were, quote unquote, used to consist of parties of children dressed up in fantastic costume who went round to farmhouses and cottages, singing a song, begging for soul cakes, apples, money, or anything good wives would give them. Christian minister, known as Prime Sore Conte, wrote, It was traditionally believed that souls of the departed wandered the earth until All Saints Day and All Hallows Eve provided one last chance for the dead to gain vengeance on their enemies before moving to the next world. In order to avoid being recognized by any soul that might be seeking such vengeance, people would don masks and costumes to disguise their identities. During the Middle Ages, statues and relics of martyred saints were paraded through the streets during the All Hollow Tide, and any churches that weren't able to afford any of these things had the people dress up as saints, which is still continued to this day. In France, it is believed that the dead of the churchyards would rise for the one wild hideous carnival. This was known as Dance Macabre, 
An article in Christianity Today claims that the dance macabre was enacted at village pageants and court mops, and the people would be dressed up as corpses from various strata of society. This may have been where the origin of Halloween costume parties come from, but I'm pretty sure it began way before, like back in 1500, seeing as how people would use this time to not invite just the people we know, but the whole village, because hey, that was all the people they knew. And from there, it finally goes across the pond to North America, where the first record of guising comes from 1911 in Kingston, Ontario. This is when the children would go around the neighborhood dressed up. When it came to the US, Halloween was celebrated with costume parades and cough cough adult activities cough cough. These parties were meant to be a private, not public, and the celebrations would include alcohol and sensuality was de-emphasized. So while the kids were expected to celebrate the festival, the adults would participate in the quote-unquote extra activities. This was also the time when all costumes were made at home and made to emphasize a gothic nature. In the 1930s, A.S. Fishbach, Ben Cooper, Inc., and other firms began mass-producing costumes for sales in stores. This is when trick-or-treating became popular in the North American continent, seeing as how the costumes were then designed to imitate supernatural and scary beings such as vampires, werewolves, zombies, ghosts, skeletons, witches, goblins, trolls, devils, etc, etc. In more recent times, the costumes have begun to include the sci-fi inspired characters such as aliens or superheroes. It then started including pop culture figures such like presidents, actors, athletes, etc. Then came the popular trend of adults wearing costumes, but we all know what adults wear, which is not kid friendly, seeing as how more skin has been showing than is socially acceptable. And then for the little ones, for the, at least the little girls, they would take this opportunity to dress up as princesses, fairies, angels, cute little animals, or flowers. And there you have it, the adventure is through the origins of Halloween costumes. If you like this episode and want to listen to more, you can hear me on other platforms other than Anchor, like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. Links to each will be provided in the description below. Again, I would like to give a big thank you to the listener that recommended me for the interview. And because of you, I wouldn't have thought to make the Patreon I have made. That if you join, you can also join the Discord where you can actually help with giving me new topics or just making new friends and just showing off your artwork.